Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating an ActionScript 3.0 drop down menu. And this menu should be pretty easy to create. It's going to take a little bit of time to set up, but once we have it set up, you can pretty much take it and edit it. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, it's very editable, so it's very cool uh, that way. And you can see here basically when we roll over a button, well, our output menu or output panel, excuse me, is telling us, hey, you're selecting home but uh, home underscore MC. That's the name of that movie clip. So every time we do that, it's basically telling us what we're selecting. When I roll over the portfolio button, we get our drop down menu. And when I roll out, obviously it goes away. And then the rest of our buttons also just let us know, hey, you're selecting, you know, this button. So all of that can be useful later on if we want to create other drop down menus. You're going to see how that's going to become useful for us. And, uh, you know, we can really do anything at that point with this menu. So we're going to create this menu from scratch. So I'm going to go File, New, and create a new Flash file. ActionScript 3.0 is what we are using. And the first thing we want to do is come over to the Properties panel, choose the Edit button here to the right-hand side of our Size Options, and we're going to make this 800 wide. We're going to keep the 400 high. Frame rate will stay at about 30 frames per second with a background color of white. Well, the first thing we want to do with our menu, first I'm just going to center it here. I'm holding on the space bar. When you hold down the space bar, it automatically flips you over to your hand tool, which allows you to drag uh, your Flash movie anywhere you want uh, as far as repositioning your view of it. What we want to do is rename our first layer. We're just going to name it ends. We want to create those rounded ends here. And you may be thinking, hey, well, I can just use the rectangle primitive tool, rounded rectangle tool, whatever, and create it. Well, not really, because the way we're doing this, I just prefer to create two quick circles that are basically going to sit on either end and basically lay the buttons in between. So what I'm going to do is grab my oval tool. I'm going to set my foreground color to black because that's probably what yours is. It's probably a solid color. We'll add the gradient in a moment. I'm just going to draw out a circle. It can be any size, any shape. We're going to take care of the resizing here in the properties panel. But no, there is no stroke to this oval, just a fill. I want the width to be 50, and I want the height to be 50. I want the X and Y to be 0. Setting the X and Y to 0, you can see it just pops it right up in that top corner. I'm going to hit Z, which is my zoom tool, and I'm going to zoom in on this circle. And I'm going to select it again. And I'm going to open up my color panel right here, window color. And I'm just going to fill this with a plain black to white gradient. It's a linear gradient, not the radial gradient. So just a straight gradient like so. Now I'm going to hit my F key, which is the hotkey for your gradient transform tool. And CS4 is located underneath the free transform tool. So gradient transform. And with this object selected, I'm going to grab this little circular point here outside of the circle. It's top right corner. I'm going to rotate this around so it's running straight up and down. Now what I want to do is zoom out a little because I want to grab the center square point here and pull it straight up. And what that's going to do is spread my gradient out. Right now, you can see the gradient just runs with black going from starting at one line to white at the other. So if we pull this apart, you can see it really, our, our circle almost looks like it's just solid gray now. However, if I pull this up, and I'm pulling up by just selecting that center point there, pull it up, you can see we're lightening up our oval. And I want a little bit more of a color change there, so I'm going to compress this gradient a little more. A little more yet. Drag it down a little bit. And there we go. That looks like a pretty good uh, gradient right there. Oop, hit the Z key. We now have our first shape. What I want to do next is, I'll zoom in a touch to start. And I just want to copy this, Command or Control C, and Command Shift or Control Shift V to paste it in place. And let's just shift it over a little bit. Okay, so you can see we have a copy of this now. What I want to do is set the X of this to the width of our stage minus the width of this. So 750 should be good because our stage is 800 across and these are 50 across. You can see it pops it right into that exact corner. Perfect. Now that I have that, I'm going to select these two circles, hit F8, which is going to convert them to a symbol. I'm going to name them MC... Oh, let's just name them ends. Why not? MC ends. Notice I have the registration point set to the top left corner. Not quite as important with these circles, but it's going to be pretty important when we start creating our buttons as far as uh, you being able to follow along and align the same way I'm aligning. So we're going to be working with that registration point in the top left corner. I'm going to hit OK. And we have our first movie clip. We're going to create a new layer now, and I'm going to name this buttons. What we're going to do is we're going to create these buttons, one button at a time, and we're going to have five buttons here, and then we're going to convert each individual button to a movie clip, and then group them all together into one big movie clip, and that's what's going to sit here. So maybe it would be better if we just go ahead and create it instead of me trying to uh, explain it to you. So here's what we're going to do. Draw out a rectangle. Again, any size, any color. It doesn't matter. No stroke. I'm going to resize this because I want there to be five buttons and I already know that I'm going to have a 25 pixel buffer on 
either side of uh, my stage here, I know that I really am working with 750 pixels of width. So for five buttons, we need these buttons to be 150 pixels wide. And let's make them, well, 50 tall, since that is what our uh, circles here are. And now that I have this uh, selected here, what I want to do is get that same exact gradient that I have in these circles. And this can be a little tricky because, you see, if, if I, uh, well, I need to double click inside of here. If I use my eyedropper tool, which is right here, and select that, you can see it automatically gives me the gradient I need. But not only is it giving me the gradient, it's giving me that positioning. Remember, we use that gradient transform tool to position the gradient within that circle. So it's giving me that. So I'm going to come back here to scene one, and I'm just going to fill my shape. But look at what happens. The shape disappears. Well, the shape really didn't disappear. It's there. It's just filled with white. Because if you remember, our bottom line of our gradient ends right about here. So everything after that is white. So really, before we go filling this, we should really align this shape with the top of the stage so it is on the same exact uh, X, or excuse me, Y, uh, coordinate point as our circles here. So what we want to do is just select this, go Window, Align, and check to Stage, and just say Align with the top of the stage. There we go. And to keep things simple here, I'm going to fill this with black, or really anything. I'll just do this green, just so you can see it. So now that we have that, I'm going to come back into here. I'm going to grab my eyedropper again. An eye drop from that. We're going to come back here to scene one, uh, grab the paint bucket tool, and just fill that shape. And you can see what we have is an exact copy of that gradient, something that's going to mesh up perfectly with our ends. So now that we've created this button, I can move it wherever I want now. We can go realigning them later. What I want to do is convert this to a movie clip. So with this button selected, we just want to hit F8, which is going to bring up our convert to symbol dialog box. And we're going to name this MC button base because this is really going to be within the actual movie clip which is our button again this is a movie clip even though we're calling it a button the type of symbol is a movie clip registration top left corner hit OK and we're going to double click inside of this guy and in here we're just going to double click this layer we're going to call this button base and we're going to create a new layer for some text we're going to grab the text tool and with the text tool, uh, we're going to start with the color black, but we're going to recolor our text in just a moment. What we want to do is start with the longest word in our menu. And I happen to know here, because I've got a little note in front of me, I have five buttons going into this menu bar, as I mentioned before. Uh, one for home, one for portfolio, one for contact, one for about us, and one for media. So... Out of those five words, the longest, well, I didn't mean to do that, the longest of them is the word portfolio. So... The first thing we do here, now when I place this text, I can immediately see that it's dynamic text. We want to place static text, so make sure you're using static text. And we can just type the word portfolio. I'm going to type in all caps, so you can not cap lock, caps lock on, or just hold the shift key. Portfolio. And another important thing is make sure you center this type. We want to do that because we're going to be changing this in each button. So we want this to be aligned to the center of each button. So what we're going to do is select this right here in the format section, align center, so it aligns it right to the center. And we're going to drag this over and just roughly center it in the middle of our button. There we go. Very nice. We're going to change the color here to sort of a medium gray. That's nice. Uh, Arial bold. We could probably get away with 14 point. Let's try that. And maybe that's a little too big. Let's go with 13. That's pretty good. So we'll stick with 13 point Arial bold and just a medium gray here. Medium slash dark gray really. I'm going to double click on this layer and name it TXT for text. And we can lock up that lower layer because we're really not going to have to access that. And we don't want to accidentally select it when we're coming into this later on to edit uh, each individual button to you know, give it a different label. So I'm going to double click anywhere to get back to uh, the root level of my timeline where I have my you know, rounded edges and my first button. Now that I have this button, I'm going to delete it. So just select it and delete it. And you may be thinking, why? in the world did you just delete it? Well, the reason is over here on my library, I still have a copy of it right here, MC button base. And what I want to do is drag out five of these. So I'm going to drag out one, I'm going to drag out two, I'm going to drag out three and four and five. Now, the reason I just deleted that is for a very simple reason. I don't want to accidentally you know, make some sort of edit to my base button. This is, you can think of this as our master button. If we ever need to create more of these buttons in maybe later on down the road in this flash project or we need it for reference later on, we're always going to have that. We're not going to accidentally uh, mess it up. 
So what we're going to begin doing here is selecting each of these buttons, right clicking on it, and instead of moving off screen, I'm just going to come up here to Modify, Symbol, Duplicate Symbol. And we're going to give this a new name. We're going to call this MC Home. So there we go. We have our first button. I can double click inside of this, double click on the text, and just type out the word HOME in all caps. Go back and you can see that because it's its own movie clip, you know, none of the other movie clips are uh, changed. Whereas if I were just to come in here and rename this HOME, you can see all the other movie clips change. So that's the reason we uh, duplicate our symbol. So portfolio again. And what we want to do here is select the portfolio button, uh, modify symbol, duplicate symbol, and we're going to name this MC Port, short for portfolio. And then for this guy, select it, modify symbol, duplicate symbol. And we're going to do this with all of these buttons. And this is going to be the contact button. So double click inside of there, select that text, contact. All right, next up, modify symbol, duplicate. This is going to be MC about. And we're going to change the text to a simple label of about space us. Double click to get back to the root level. And last but not least, our media button, modify symbol, duplicate symbol. And we're going to name this MC media. Get inside of there. And media in all caps. Very nice. Double click to get back to the, uh, our original level here. And what we need to do now is align all these buttons, get them lined up between uh, our rounded edges, and then convert the whole mess of buttons to a symbol. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to select this first guy, and I'm going to set his X to 25, because that's going to be 25 pixels off the left side of our stage, and the Y to 0. It's going to bring us all the way up to the top. Media happens to be the last button. I already know the Y needs to be 0. It needs to be all the way at the top. But the X has to be the width of the stage minus... 200. So we're going to set this to 600. Oh, not 600. My mistake. Uh, mathematic error there. It's actually supposed to be 625. So it's a width of the button plus that 25 from the edge there. So there we are. We're lined up. What I can do now is select all three of these buttons, set their Y to 0. It's going to well set the Y of the top one to 0. So really what we can do is just align them all to the top. But for the sake of time, we're just going to come in here and set all of the Ys to zero. And then I'm going to select all four buttons. I'm going to lock up the ends layer so I don't accidentally select the ends and just select all of this stuff. And I'm going to go window align. And in addition to aligning options here, we have this whole section of the panel dedicated to distribution. So we're going to distribute these right here. Distribute the horizontal center. And uh, I have two stage checked on. We don't want that checked on. When this is checked on, obviously, as you just saw, it's going to distribute them evenly across the stage. We don't want that. We want them to be evenly distributed from the furthest outside point to, you know, from, from outside point to outside point, essentially. And when I do this, you can see it lines them all up very nicely in accordance with the two outer buttons that we set just a moment ago. So we now have what looks like a solid line of buttons. We're going to select all these buttons, and we're going to group them into a movie clip. We're going to hit F8. And we're going to say MC nav bar. Now, note here, it's a movie clip registration top left. So we're going to hit OK. The next step is going to be giving this movie clip an instance name. So we're going to name it nav bar underscore MC. And we need to go inside of this now and give each of our buttons in here instance names as well. So I'm going to name home. We're just going to go simple with this. We're going to say home underscore MC. And portfolio is going to be port underscore MC, and so on and so forth about us. Just about underscore MC. Contact. I think you get the point. And last but not least, media underscore MC. So there we go. We've just given all of our uh, buttons and our navigation bar an instance name so we can now talk to them via action script. The next thing we want to do is create a new layer, and we're going to name this layer Clicker. And I'm calling this layer Clicker. It's really going to be uh, our drop-down menus are going to be uh, inside of this layer as well. Uh, so we'll probably change the name of this layer later. But for now, we're just setting up something to click on. So later on, after we've created our drop-down menus, the movie clip containing the drop-down menus uh, is going to essentially be hidden here in the Flash Authoring tool because nothing's going to be showing initially. Um, so we, we just want to have something we can click on. So later on down the road, if we come in here, we need to work on it. We just have something there we can double click on to access our menus. 
So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and just draw out a big rectangle. I'm actually going to make it the size of the stage, which is 800 by 400. Set the X and Y to 0. And uh, I'm going to give it sort of a brighter color, maybe a nice bright green here. And I uh, hit F8 to convert that to a symbol. And I'm going to call this MC Clicker. Or actually, no, I'm not going to name that MC Clicker. I'm going to name this MC Drop Downs, because I have to remember that we're keeping drop down menus within this, so we don't want to confuse ourselves later on down the road, as I almost just did there. So now we're going to double click to get inside of this drop down menu uh, movie clip, and we're just going to select the entire green square, and I'm going to hit Q, which is the hotkey for the free transform tool. I'm going to pull it straight down, so we just have a thin green bar across the base of this movie clip, and I'm going to name this layer, deselect it, and I'm going to double click on that layer, and I'm going to name that layer Clicker. So we now have something we can click on because really our drop down menus are going to be hidden. But the problem we're going to run into here is this clicker here, and you can see, I'm going to hit Control Enter Command Return, it shows up across the bottom. That's a big problem, and if this is our movie, uh, our final finished movie, or final finished product, drop down menu, whatever, we can't have that showing up. So one of two things we can do is just get rid of it before we finally publish the movie, or as I'm going to do here, I am just going to Hit F8 to convert it to a symbol, and I'm going to name this MC Clicker. And I'm going to give it an instance name of Clicker underscore MC. And I'm going to add a new layer above this layer. Name it AS for Action Script. I'm going to open up my Action Script panel. That would be F9. It's the hotkey. And I'm just going to say, well, first I'm going to place a stop action there because we're going to have some animation in just a moment. So throw that stop action there uh, just to get us started. And we're going to say Clicker underscore MC dot visible space equals space false. So what this is going to do when this action script is run by Flash, this clicker is going to disappear. So when we publish the movie, control enter, you can see it is in fact gone. Beautiful. Again, you don't have to get rid of it that way. Uh, you can just get rid of it when you're done working on the movie. I tend to like to keep something there to click on, um, but you know, However you want to do it, it's no big deal. Uh, that's just one sort of way you can work around it. Maybe not the most elegant way to work around it, but if it works, hey, it works. So now that we're inside of this, let's begin constructing our menus. After all, this is the movie clip that's going to contain all of our drop-down menus. These drop-down menus, I'm going to flip back over to the other document here for just a quick moment of reference. These drop-down menus, if you look at the menu, are really just all these buttons that I've stacked on top of each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the first button, and to build our drop-down menu, we're just going to stack these buttons on top of each other and place a frame around them. When that frame is rolled over, well, that drop-down menu goes away. So really, really simple, easy to do, maybe a little time-consuming, but again, once you get it set up, it's no big deal. So let's come back to the file we're working on and create a new layer, and I'm going to call this layer Portfolio Menu. We'll say Portfolio Menu because it's the menu for our portfolio here. So the first thing we want to do is grab the rectangle tool, draw out a rectangle any size. We're going to resize to an exact width, the uh, width being 200, and the height, let's try 25. Maybe 25 is a little small. Um, yeah, you know, we'll stick with 25. So what I'm going to do here is I need to fill this with a color. So we're going to fill it with, I'm going to grab the color uh, panel here. I've got some hexadecimal codes written down. Hexadecimal codes are just these hex codes here. You can see when I roll over, it says hex. Uh, that's the code that tells what color uh, is going into said shape. So I'm going to say F2, 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 and I'm going to hit the Enter key, and you can see I've got a very light gray. I now want to stroke this. So I'm going to grab the ink bottle tool, which is located underneath the paint bucket tool, and I'm going to drop a stroke onto it. And you can see that there is actually a very light gray stroke. I don't know what color yours is, but just if you move up to the edge of the rectangle, you can see you get that sort of rounded semicircle at the base of your cursor. When you see that, double click and you will select just the stroke. Now that we've selected just the stroke, over here on the color panel, make sure you're working on the stroke color by just clicking that little pencil. And the color we want is, in fact, CC, CC, CC. Hit the Enter key, and you should have a different color. You can see here, if I wanted green, I could make it green. I, however, know I don't want green. I want that nice light gray. So there we go. We have our nice light gray, and there is the color of our initial button. And next up, we want to select this button that we've just created and hit F8 to convert it to a symbol. Here, however, we're converting this to a button symbol. So we're going to name this... Uh, BTN, not MC because it's a button symbol. 
drop down uh, button. There we go. That's uh, descriptive enough. Hit OK. And we're going to double click to get inside of this button. Now that we're inside of the button, the first thing I want to do is hold down my Alt or Option key and drag this initial keyframe here over to the hit state. There we go. Now that we have frames on the up, over, and down, and a keyframe over on the hit state, we're good to go. I do want to add a keyframe to my over state, however. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Alt drag the up state to the over state. Just holding on the Alt key. If you're on the Mac, that will be Option. Now that we've done that, I'm going to select the fill color, and we want to edit this color. Okay, so just the fill color. Make sure we're working with the fill color here. And I want this color to be, well, let's try something a little darker. Let's go E, 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 E. Hit tab, or, or excuse me, hit enter to fill that. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty nice. Just slightly darker. You can see there's how it starts out. And, well, you know, let's hit control enter. And you can see when we roll over, it just is just a little bit darker. So that's very nice. And now that we've done that, we want to create a new layer in here. Let's just name this layer button. Create a new layer in here for our text. Double click and name it text or TXT, whatever you want. And uh, this text, grab the text tool and drop some text in here. We're going to um, start by, we're just going to say uh, web design. And I know because it's such a light gray, you can barely see that. So over here in the properties panel, let me move the color panel out of the way. Over here in the text properties panel, select color, and we're going to choose a uh, nice dark gray, maybe CC, that's CC, 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 which is that same exact gray as our, uh, our stroke there. So that works very nicely. I want the size of this to be 12 points, however, nothing bigger than that. And this is going to be formatted aligned to the left. So here under format, aligned to the left, and uh, you know leave it a little a little off of the left hand side of our button. So there we go, we have our first button set up and you can see the over and down states, the text just stays the way it is. We want to make sure we don't place keyframes on the over or down states. As long as we just have it on the up state, when we come in here to edit these buttons, we'll only have to edit one little field of text and it will automatically edit the over and down states. So we're not going to have to worry about that. That's going to make for a button that's pretty easy to go in and change as we need. So I'm going to double click now to come back to our drop down menu and here is my first button. Great. Now that I have my first button, I'm going to do what I did before with these buttons. I'm just going to delete it. So there we go. And I'll bring up the library by double clicking that tab and I'm going to drag out, uh, let's go with six buttons. So I'm going to say one, out here if I can drag it out. There we go. One and two. Don't worry about aligning them. We're going to take care of all of that later. Two, three, and uh, here's four five, and last but not least, number six. All right, now that we've done these, I'm going to show you how to do the first one. I'm going to you know, do that same exact modify symbol, duplicate symbol, and we're going to name this BTN Web uh, Des for web design. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to double click inside of this, and I'm going to select the text field, and I'm going to leave it as web design. There we go, double click out of it. I really didn't need to go in there at all, but I wasn't thinking for a moment. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So I'm going to go modify, symbol, duplicate, symbol. And this one's going to be BTN logo des. So we're going to have logo design, double click inside of here. And uh, select that text and just select the web part and in all caps, just type logo. There we go. And come back out here to the main menu. And now for these last four buttons, I'm actually going to pause the video and do them to keep from boring you. All right, so we're back. You can see I have all of these uh, buttons named. You may want to take a moment, pause the video here maybe, and copy them. Uh, you know, just whatever. They can be any, whatever your buttons, uh, you know, whatever you want them to be. No big deal. So here we have them. The first thing I'm going to do is select all of these buttons and go Window Align. And I'm going to make sure I don't have two, two stage checked on. So I'm going to align the left edge of all of these objects. There we go. Very nice. And I'm going to close the Align panel. What I'm going to do now is zoom in, and I'm going to do this part by hand. I'm just going to grab these guys, and I'm going to nudge them straight up until they meet. Now, look at this. See, because I have a one pixel stroke on each button, I get this thicker stroke in between the buttons. So what I want to do is once I get them nudged up to each other, I just want to hit my up arrow key once to just nudge them up a little further. And that doesn't quite do it. There we go. Just so there's only one line there in between the buttons. So I'm going to nudge this guy close and then come in and bring him up tight. Just like that. You can see how it only looks like there's one line there. There we go. And grab both of these guys. And I'm holding down shift and uh, the up arrow key, uh, which really isn't necessary, but it's kind of a habit. 
I'll grab this last button here and just nudge this guy right up and into place. So now we have a very nice little compact drop down menu we've created. The next thing we want to do is just select all these guys and set the Y to, uh, let's say, 51. That's going to bring it right up there beneath our drop down menu. And the next thing we want to do is create a new layer down here in our, uh, our timeline. Whoa, didn't want to do that. Let's bring this guy up a little bit so we can bring our timeline up a little bit so we can see what we're working on down here. We want to add a new layer and we're going to name this layer, double click on it, and just name it Portfolio Frame. This is the button that is going to, you know, stretch itself around this menu. And maybe even another thing we want to do is just select all of our buttons here and just set the X to uh, 175. Now the reason I'm doing that is because that's 150, which is the width of our home button, plus 25, which is the width of our rounded edge. So this is going to be right at the edge of our portfolio button. So when we set up our little rollover for this portfolio button, it's going to line up nicely with the edge of our drop-down menu. So now that we've done that, we want to come up here to the portfolio frame and begin drawing a just basically roughing in a, a thin border around this. So how am I going to do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my stroke. And I'm going to use a color that is very easy to see. Let's take a bright blue here. And I'm just going to draw a nice thin rectangle. We don't want it to be too big. Just a nice thin rectangle like so. Drag it right up. It should snap right to the bottom of our uh, menu. I'm going to alt and drag out a copy of that. Hit the Q key and rotate it. All right, so I've got one, oh, don't want to do that. I have the one side of my menu. I'm going to hold down my Alt key and drag a copy right over to the other side. So now that we have that, I'm going to bring this guy right over, attach him to the side of our drop-down menu like so. We just want it to be pressed right up against the side. There we go. And now what we want to do is draw a, basically, we're going to cut this right here, so I'm going to, draw a selection over it. You can see that I can just take that bit right off of there. And I'm going to hit Q and I'm going to hold my shift key and rotate it so it lays flat on its side. I'm going to drag this guy right up to right there. Uh, and I'm going to hold down my Q key and I'm going to make sure the width here is set to 50 because if we recall correctly, these buttons are 200 wide, whereas our buttons up here are only 150. So we have 50 extra pixels. Uh, and whoops, I messed that up. I accidentally entered V as my uh, value here in the height, which is why it flattened out like that. So we're going to drag that right over, and we're going to duplicate this, hold down the Alt key, and I'm going to hit Q. We're going to rotate this, make it go straight up and down, set this right on top here, and uh, last but not least, we're going to grab a big chunk of this right here. Make sure I deselect those buttons, hold down my Alt key, and just duplicate that chunk of that side. Hold down my Q key again, Shift to rotate it, just like so. V key to grab my selection tool, and we're going to make this uh, come right across the top here. Hold down, or hit Q again, excuse me, and just drag that right over to make it meet up with our other blue part of the frame. Now that we've done this, we can just select these bits that are sticking out. You can see, you just select that top bit and hit the delete key to get rid of that. We're not really going for a perfectly clean look. Uh, we don't need to be worried about it being perfectly clean, but you know, just cleaning up some of the junk uh, left behind. You can see, there we go. Let's grab these two on the bottom, delete them, and grab this guy right here and uh, delete him. So there we go. We've got a nice little frame which wraps itself neatly around both our button and our drop-down menu. So now that I have this, I'm going to select it and notice all those objects have automatically been meshed together. I'm going to select this and I'm going to convert this to a button symbol as well. So I'm going to hit F8 and I'm just going to call this BTN port because remember this is the frame for the portfolio port uh, frame. Uh, however, we will be able to take this and reuse it for other drop-down menus if need be. So I'm going to hit OK. And uh, I'm going to double-click inside of this button because as things stand, let me get back out of it for a second. As things stand, we're going to see this blue border, obviously, when we publish this movie. So we need to make that disappear, but we still want it to act as a button region. When somebody rolls over this thin area of the flash stage, we want something to happen. So double-click to get inside of that button symbol. And just simply, don't hold down Alt, don't hold down Control Shift, nothing like that. Just grab this keyframe and drag it right over to the hit state. You can see what that does. It takes everything off of the up, over, and down states and only gives us a hit area. So essentially, this is a button that contains nothing but a button area. So there's nothing you can see, which is great. When I double click away, you can see it's turned into this very light aqua color. When you see that, you know you've successfully created a hit area. So now that we've done that, we're ready to start scripting this drop down menu. Let's get this drop down menu set up so it just appears on one keyframe right out here. So I'm actually going to come out to frame 20, right click, insert frames, 
and I'm going to drag these two keyframes, portfolio frame and portfolio menu, right out here to frame 10, and I'm going to place a keyframe above them. I'm going to hit F6, which places a keyframe, and I'm going to place two things on this frame. I'm going to place a stop action, and I'm also going to place a frame label. So let's throw the stop action on the first, hit F9, and just type the word stop, and I'll close that right up. And with this frame selected, you can see I have here on my properties panel label. This is the name of the label. We want this name to be the same as the instance name of our portfolio button up here. And if I recall correctly, we name that port underscore MC. This is going to be very important because this is how we're going to use action script to, to automatically pick which one of these keyframes to go to uh, depending on which button is rolled over. It's going to keep us from having a ton of script to write uh, for each uh, individual drop down menu. So now that we've done that, select two frames, uh, these two immediate frames after uh, these keyframes, okay? Just like that. Right click and say insert blank keyframe. So there our drop down menu appears for one frame. And when this portfolio frame is rolled over, we need this to basically go back to frame one, in essence, making all of that stuff just disappear. So we're going to come back here, hit F9. And uh, well, before we do that, I need to give this button an instance name. We're going to name this port frame underscore btn and uh, come back here to our actions hit f9 and we're going to say port frame dot add event listener open parenthesis and we're going to say mouse event whoop, mouse event just like that dot mouse underscore over and we're going to execute the function go up or we're going to say go back because really that's what we're doing is going back to frame one go back f close parenthesis semicolon and here the function is function uh, go back f and it is an event it's a mouse event and close parenthesis colon the word void open curly bracket enter enter return twice close curly bracket and the up arrow key now in here we're simply going to say go to and stop open parenthesis one, close parenthesis, semicolon. So uh, when this frame is rolled over, just go back to frame one and stop. Just sit there on frame one. So great. Let's head back to the root level of our timeline writing scene one up here. And we're going to add, well, number one, let's change the name of this layer to drop down. Or really drop downs is what it should be. Add a new layer for action script, name it AS. And what we want to do is open up our uh, actions panel and the first thing we're going to do is add that little rollover effect uh, by creating a glow using action script so uh, it's going to be creating a glow filter so we're going to say var and we're going to call this nav btn well, there we go btn glow and this is a glow filter and is equal to a new you guessed it glow filter we say open parenthesis, and we have a bunch of uh, options here. You can see this tooltip really is quite long. Matter of fact, it goes off of my recorded screen here. So the first thing we need is color. Now, the first thing you need to do when you're punching in colors here is say 0x. And I happen to know the color that I want is 999999. So there's our color. Got that out of the way. What's the alpha of this color? Well, in ActionScript 3.0, remember we have from 0 to 1. So we're going to say about 50%, which would be 0 0.5. After that, we have the blur along the x-axis. We're going to say blur at 15. And, or, you know, actually, blur at 0 along the x. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to say 15 along the y. And after that, we have the strength, uh, which we're going to say is 1. And after that, we have the quality. We're going to say 2. And after that, do you want it to be an inner glow? This is just true or false. If you say false, it's going to be an outer glow on the button. I want it to be an inner glow, so I'm going to say true. And finally, we have knockout, uh, and this is going to be false. Okay, so close parenthesis and semicolon to finish that off. We now have a glow filter which we can apply to our buttons. So let's set that up so when a button's rolled over, this glow filter shows up. When it's rolled out, the glow filter goes away. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we're going to say is nav bar underscore mc. I believe that was uh, my instance name. Yes, nav bar underscore mc dot add event listener and we're listening for a mouse event the mouse event we're listening for is mouse underscore over 
just as a moment ago we were for that frame. And we're going to say nav over f. So when a mouse rolls over our nav bar, we want it to do something. And there's just that close parenthesis and semicolon after that. I'm going to select that entire line of code. Command or Control C, go down, and paste it in below. And basically, we want this to do the same exact thing, just we're listening for a mouse out. That's out in all caps. And the function we want to trigger is nav out f. So there we go. We are now going to create our first function. So I'm going to say function, try to spell function correctly. And uh, here I'm going to say nav over f. And this is an event, colon, it's a mouse event. Uh, close the parenthesis, colon, and the word void. Open curly bracket, enter return tw twice, close curly bracket, up arrow key. Now here's where we're basically going to say event dot target dot filters, space equals space, uh, open uh, open bracket, I believe. Yes, open bracket, we're going to do that. BTN glow with a capital G, close bracket, and a semicolon. So we need to just duplicate this so we have a function as nav out. So I'm going to duplicate this and uh, move down. Command or control V. We're going to say nav out. And this is going to be event.target.filters equal. And we're going to leave these brackets blank. So I'm going to check to make sure I have no errors here. And it contains no errors. Let's check to see what happens here. Notice the way I'm doing this is just event.target.filter. So basically, whatever movie clip within this nav bar movie clip that I target, that's what I want this filter to be applied to. So this is one of the uh, advantages to ActionScript 3.0 and the display list uh, in general. So Control Enter, Command Return, and uh, whoa, we have a, an error. Uh, we have an access of an undefined property. Okay, I must have made a simple spelling mistake. Port frame. Yes, I know exactly what I did. Let's come back into here. That doesn't have to do with the script we just put in. It has to do with the script we did before. Double click on this clicker. And uh, in here, our portfolio frame, the name of it is port frame underscore BTN. Here in the actions, I have port frame. Make sure you spell your instance names correctly. It will save you lots of time. So we're going to save this. Go back to our initial... Uh, point of entry here. Control enter, command return, and uh, look at that. When I roll over the buttons, they each have this nice little subtle inner inner glow, excuse me, applied to them. Great. So now that we've done that, we're ready to set these things up to uh, trigger the drop down menu. Setting this up in ActionScript is a breeze. We're going to select the action script layer, hit F9, and basically we're going to uh, add this little bit of code right here beneath the nav over. So here's what we're going to say. We're going to say nav bar underscore MC dot set child uh, set child index is what we're looking for there we go uh, so we're setting child index here we're going to say open parenthesis and the child that we're going to be setting uh, is going to be event dot target which as we learned a moment ago is really the child or the movie clip within this movie clip that we're rolling over so we're going to say event dot target as and then the word movie clip with a capital M and then a capital C for clip. Uh, that is spelled as one word. Comma, and uh, the index is going to be one. So we're going to say close parenthesis, semicolon. All right, that's the first step. The next thing we need to say is drop, uh, well, that's not, I don't remember what my instance name of this is here. Oh, I don't have an instance name. We need to give our drop down menus movie clip and instance name. So we're going to say drop uh, menus underscore MC. There we go. And go back to action script. F9. We're going to say drop menus underscore MC dot go to and stop. We already have a stop action on our frame or that keyframe, but we're just going to say go to and stop. Open parenthesis. And the frame we want to go to uh, is uh, that frame label. And remember, we named that frame label the same as the instance name of the portfolio button. So all I have to do is say, hey, remember that child that we just set the index, uh, the index of it to one? I want you to grab that child, the name of that child, the index name of that child. So here's what we're going to say. We're going to say nav bar underscore mc dot get child at, and uh, the index level here uh, is going to be one. And then we're going to say dot name. So the name of the child within this navbar movie clip that is at the index level here of one. So I'm going to close that off with a close parenthesis and a semicolon. One last line of code. I'm just going to throw in a simple trace statement that's going to say, hey, uh, 
we are rolling over. Once I get in within the trade statement, there we go. Open and close quotes. We are rolled over. Dot dot dot. And after the parentheses, I'm going to hit space plus space navbar underscore mc dot get child at uh, level being one and dot name. So we're going to say we we're rolled over, and then it's going to give us the instance name of the button we we're rolled over. Let's just quickly check to make sure we have no errors. And it contains no errors. Hit F9 to close that up. And Commander Control Enter. And when I roll over home, look at that. The output panel says we are rolled over home underscore MC. When I roll over portfolio, you can see the drop down menu shows up. When I roll out, it goes away. About us, contact the media. So there you go. All of that prep work. And it was a bit of prep work. You can see here I didn't quite align photography correctly. Uh, but you can see all that prep work uh, pays off in the end. We have a very sharp, simple, easy to edit, easy to use drop down menu. And you can go ahead and select any of those individual buttons now and link them to different parts of your Flash movie, different frames, uh, keyframes, whatever. You can link them to files that you want to download. Just link right to the URL. You can link them to other pages. Obviously, again, right there uh, to uh, the URL of your page using that navigate to URL uh, command. So that's it. That is how you create a simple drop down menu here in Flash with ActionScript 3.0. I know it's a bit of work. I know it's a bit of time. But once you create one like I have right now, you can really go ahead and copy it and copy a lot of stuff over to new projects, uh, obviously copying the code and things like that. Go in and you know you have a lot of power over how the drop down menu lo looks. So just go ahead, have fun with it, create one. And once you've created one, you basically created them all, uh, you know, at least for this uh, particular drop down menu. So if you need to use it for multiple projects, that's no big deal. You don't have to go and spend, you know, an hour creating your drop down menu, which really once you start creating these drop down menus, you should be able to get them thrown together in, you know, 15, 20 minutes. It's no big deal. And uh, that is how you create this drop down menu using ActionScript 3.0 in Flash CS4. Uh, thank you for sticking with me. It's been uh, a little bit of time it's taken to do this, but this is uh, hopefully you've learned a lot through this tutorial, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com.